In this video, I'm going to take a weapon you probably forgot about and destroy level 9k. What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video, coming at you with a solo level cap, mostly focused around a weapon and using no ribbons and it still shreds. If you don't know, I spoke about this weapon in a previous video and I was like, this gun has potential, and oh boy it does, as you just saw in the montage. Also, I did this entire run live on stream. If you missed it and want to see the full VOD, I will link it in the description. But yeah, do come and catch me live. I don't only stream Warframe, but other games and even a little bit of just chatting. So, come on over. But before all of that, a quick word from today's sponsor. Welcome to the ultimate battle of the machines, the Mech Arena. Here, giant robots fight to the death for glory, honor, and the ultimate prize to be the very best. A game that you can download now with the links in the description. Mech Arena is a competitive multiplayer online hero shooter using mechs. In terms of mechs to play, my fave is the new Sentinel Mech. This mech is a beast. Sentinel has this amazing tower shield that can block frontal and overhead attacks from javelins and nade launchers. There's a lot of things happening in the game right now. First up this March is the Holy Event, which gives players the chance to earn some new mech skins and the ultra-powerful Missile Rack 16. Then it's time for the Shamrock Slam, bringing the Sentinel mech, which you gotta get your hands on. The event also introduces the Helix Rack homing missile launcher, a pilot named Diesel, new implants, and two deep green mech skins. Also, for the new players, Mech Arena is completely free to play on Android, iOS, and PC. And you can use my personal link or scan the QR code right here to get a free starter pack worth $30, Rocket Mortar 6, an Amateur Crate, and a skin to help kickstart your game. You can also add me in-game. Thanks for Mech Arena for sponsoring this video. Download Mech Arena today. The Panthera Prime, I'm only using its alternate fire, and that mode is pretty much the Convectrix at home. It summons a hovering saw blade that deals continuous slash damage, aka a slash beam weapon. Its beam length is very small, so it desperately needs sinister reach. And since this is a slash focused weapon, we have to use a frame that synergizes with it very well. Ash. What makes Ash perfect for this? Well, it's thanks to his passive. He has bleeds deal 25% more damage and last 50% longer. This 25% bonus is multiplicative to faction mods, and that damage bonus is applied independent to faction mods, making him the best Warframe to boost slash base weapons. I'm also using the second ability Augment, Smoke Shadow. This gives me a free 150% crit chance on all of my weapons, which is additive to your crit mods. The crit chance is only given to you if you're cloaked with the ability, and not other forms of invisibility. So yeah, no cheating. And the Helmet ability that has no setbacks, requirements, or lighting optimization. Roar is an insane damage buff, perfect for damage over time builds. It functions like a faction mod and is additive to them, and this also pairs well with Ash's passive. It's very easy to use, basically press the button and do more damage. What more could you ask for? Before we go any further, timestamps exist. Use them. If you missed any information, you can always go back. 
Alright, with all that useful info that you got for the loadout, let's take a look at the build. For the Archon shards, I literally just have a red shard for duration, so I can get 200% plus duration on Ash with just one duration mod. If you want to add more shards, I suggest two amber shards for casting speed. For Arcanes, I have Arcane Acceleration for that 90% fire rate on primary weapons, excluding shotguns. And finally, Arcane Energize to top myself up when picking up energy orbs. If you don't have this, hook yourself up with Amber Shards for the energy on pickup bonus. Now, in the aura is enemy radar for that consistent enemy positioning to not always depend on your companion. Prime sure-footed for the knockdown and stagger resistance because spending less time in your butt is a huge DPS increase. Power strength at 243% with Umbral Intensify and Blind Rage. This brings my roar up to 72% damage multiplier. Vigorous swap for the 165% base damage for 3 seconds when I swap to a weapon. Smoke Shadow, the smokescreen augment, giving my weapons 150% crit chance. Duration at 209% with Narrow-Minded and my 10% Duration Archon Shard. This grants my smoke screen 16 seconds of invisibility and Roar a 62 second uptime. Prime Flow and Equilibrium for the Energy Pool and Orb Pickup Conversion. And finally, Rolling Guard for the 3 seconds of invulnerability and Status Cleansing. Alright, onto the weapon build. Please, avoid using Primary Deadhead, even though you're clearly headshotting the Demolishers. It's because delayed DOTs do not activate Primary Deadhead. Delayed damage over time includes bleeds, toxin, and heat, unlike instantaneous DOTs like gas and electric. Even though Deadhead would be a stronger boon to our damage, we won't be able to utilize it consistently because it requires direct contact kills and not from delayed damage. And in this case, my damage is bleeds. So my base damage is coming from primary dexterity. Killing enemies with melee weapons gives you base damage. You can use slash based melee weapons as well since it will benefit you even more as bleeds scale higher and are boosted even more with the the Ash build, meaning the melee is up to you. However, the weapon build is pretty simple and has no elemental damage on it. The faction mod to double dip in the bleeds, which also gets boosted with Ash's passive. Two fire rate mods, Vigilante Supplies, and Sinister Reach. Trust me, this mod is a must. This is the exact build I used in the level cap run. However, you can change things up to have a bit more flexibility and a slight damage increase. You can replace Prime Shred with Vile Acceleration and speed trigger for hammer shot to increase status chance and crit damage. That's an option. To prime my enemies before bursting them down, I'm using the Epitaph. It has forced blast and cold procs on his quick tap fire, so you can have viral, heat, IPS, and the force status effects, boosting my galvanized aptitude. The build is pretty much the usual viral heat, multi shot, fire rate, blast radius, and status chance increase. Simple and effective. And our companion does play a role in this build as well. Surprisingly, not the Panzer Volpophila, but the Dejin. It will attack enemies with Thumper equipped, be semi-immortal with Reawaken, and if I go down, it will sacrifice itself to res me. The two synth mods to aid with equilibrium. And the reason it will attack is because of Verglass. It's a beam with innate cold, requiring one toxin mod to make viral. This is useful for reapplying viral if I'm more focused on my main DPS weapon, but you can use it for pure cold just to slow down enemies and of course the rest of the Vigilante mods to boost my critical tier. It will only attack when I'm visible and it instantly applies 10 stacks of viral on an enemy. For the focus school, the usual brain dead option, Vazarin. This will protect us especially when we get stripped of energy on an energy drain conduit or enemy toxin weapons, which is a one shot. And the lines that lock enemies down in place is Magus Lockdown and Operator slash Drifter Arcane. Just Void Sling into the enemies and lock them in place. The stun animation can be prolonged thanks to cold procs. 
Okay, okay, that's pretty much the build and loadout. Anyway, that has been it from this video. If you've enjoyed and learned something from it, please do feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams, and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace.